Doug Benton is born on Christmas Day, 1961. He raises exotic birds to sell and is considered a friendly and helpful neighbor. He was a hard worker, enjoyed lifting weights, and was a pretty average guy. Doug Benton was a 38-year-old guy living his life, a welder, owned his own business, loved his birds. People described him as a great guy. Sunday, June 4th, 2000, is a hot and humid day in Georgia. Doug Benton is part of a tight neighborhood. Everyone on the street is on a first-name basis. Doug is in and out that day. There is no mistaking the throaty roar of his motorcycle's exhaust. Neighbors notice his girlfriend Tracy comes over looking for him. Tracy is a 35-year-old single mother of a teenage daughter who also happens to be the first female inductee in Oglethorpe County, Georgia. Doug often takes them out for dinner after work, but on this day, June 4th, they don't seem to be able to connect. Two weeks later, and Doug's friend and neighbor Larry hasn't spotted him since June 4th. He asks around, and when no one else seems to have seen Doug, Larry drops by. And it begins, really, on a day when a neighbor of Doug Benton goes over to his house and realizes that Doug's birds, which he was very fond of, are dead. They have no water, and they die. And it's like, well, where's Doug? Larry calls the police and informs them that something is very wrong at Doug Benton's home. The neighbor explains to the sheriff that Doug loved his exotic birds and took pride in them. Doug is 5'9", weighs 250, and is stocky and muscular. He is a power lifter and works out with his girlfriend, Tracy, regularly. On June 4th, Larry reports that he hears Doug argue with Tracy, and then he hears the characteristic roar of the exhaust from Doug's motorcycle as he drives away. Later, Larry notices Tracy's truck in Doug's driveway about 3 p.m. Easy to identify is the 1998 pickup with tinted windows and the personalized plate. Larry next hears Doug return about 5. Larry knows Doug works welding on construction sites, and it's not out of character for him to be away for a stretch of time, to leave town or even the state. But the thing is, Doug never leaves exotic birds which are worth over $35,000 at risk. But it's not the money. That's not who Doug is. He's a compassionate individual. He never hurt his birds. Larry adds that he's noticed Doug's truck parked outside his friend Jeff's house. Police follow up on the lead about Doug's truck. A note is left taped to the windshield. The note found on Doug Benton's truck is an interesting piece of evidence. The note reads, I'll be out of town for a while. Trust you to look after my truck. Don't try to contact me. I'll contact you later, Doug. Doug has never left his truck with the keys in the ignition before, and his friend finds it actually disturbingly out of character. So much so, he fears that Doug is battling depression and may have committed suicide in a nearby abandoned outbuilding. Authorities inspect the area, but the search reveals no trace of Doug. The truck, however, may yield more clues. It's towed to the lot of the police department where they put evidence. Mystified, authorities continue to look for Doug Benton. They decide to do a wellness check at his home. Law enforcement officers enter Doug Benton's home to check to see if he's okay. But Doug isn't there, and they leave the premises. So that begins this search for Doug Benton. He's missing. Authorities call the Oglethorpe County Sheriff Department, where Tracy works, to get her input on Doug's whereabouts. But a deputy says Tracy no longer works there and offers to get Tracy to call them. She does a short time later. She gave a general information about when she last talked to him and saw him and that there had been some type of argument and she said it was over a movie but the events and time frame that she had was off of some of the information we had 
She says she last saw him on June 4th, and then changes that to June 5th, telling investigators about a convicted drug dealer who she says is threatening Benton's life. One of the other agents worked in Madison County, and he mentioned that he uh, had a missing persons case, and it involved thugs. They didn't have a whole lot of information on the case. I was in Oglethorpe County, and the investigator got a call about
there is a strict limit of three per order, so don't wait. Order now. To order, call 1-800-380-2741 or visit copperbullethose.com. So call 1-800-380-2741 or visit copperbullethose.com. Order now. Looking for a way to stretch the dollar? With Insurify, you can cut your car insurance bill in half. Scroll through dozens of prices and tap to switch online. That's it. No phone calls and no wasted time. Go to Insurify and save today. Before I found Poppy Lush, I would try on a million outfits to get ready. I love that these dresses have shapewear built in. It makes me feel so confident. Live Lush. Poppy Lush. Watch this. It's all 100% real. Witness what happens to this woman's bags under her eyes in an actual time lapse in just minutes. Nothing has been doctored or tampered with. The very real problem will disappear before your eyes and hers with a revolutionary topical formulation that works in just minutes. And the effects will last for hours and hours. Over 1 million people are using this topical technique to visually reduce puffiness in bags. It works on sagging jowls, even fine lines and wrinkles on the face and forehead. Introducing Plexiderm. In just minutes, you can restore and beautify your face, even look years younger. And the look will last all day or all evening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I'm just in love with the mirror right now. Jump on board and say yes to this amazing $14.95 Prove It Plexiderm trial. You'll see why our customers describe Plexiderm with three words. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Order right now. We'll pay your shipping. Operators are standing by. The first beach towel you'll ever love is the Sand Club. Sand free, extra large, extra soft, and 10% donated for every towel sold. So the best towel under the sun supports the best causes under the sea. Get yours at sandcloud.com. It's like Dave was made for me. Oh, I know Dave. Let me see a pic. A banking app? The banking app for everyday people. I think I found the one. There's an easier way to bank and get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Thirty-eight-year-old Doug Benton is a welder, bodybuilder, and exotic bird seller who is part of a friendly neighborhood in Coburg, Georgia. When a neighbor discovers Doug's birds are dying from neglect, he calls police. Authorities do a search of his home, but there's no trace of Doug. Two weeks later, a strange block of cement with a terrible smell emanating from it is found on some remote farmland. The men continue to chip away at the mysterious, reeking block of cement. It did have a rotting smell, but based on my experience, I, I really felt like it was a human. He wound up getting the tractor and used the end of the tractor and sort of tipped it over. And it was uh, a great deal of water. And then we wound up like with a chisel and a hammer, sort of like opening up a can from the bottom. So they get a hammer and they start chipping away. And they come to a foot. There's a dead person inside this cement portion room. He was wrapped in a couple of different uh, shower curtains and material. We opened it up and the investigator that I was with knew him personally, and he observed his face and also a tattoo that was on his arm that he positively identified him as being Doug. Investigators must remove the almost one-ton cement block from the premises using a forklift. What's interesting about this case is they use these forks on a forklift that are kind of like prongs. They puncture it and they lift it up. They put it on a truck and they bring it to the medical examiner's office. Once in the crime scene lab, the process of removing the body from the cement block is initiated. And then the medical examiner begins to chip away at the cement and reveal this body that's wrapped in two shower curtains. And they get the body and it's Doug Benton. Authorities return to the victim's home for the second time. So they go over to Doug Benton's house, and they believe that maybe this can be a crime scene. But something has changed between the two visits. 
They smell something weird in the house. They smell like a kerosene smell. It's very pungent. So police had already been in his house once, and now they're back after they find his body. But the first time they go in was kind of strange because there was no kerosene smell in there, and there was a blower in there and a blowing arrow. And nothing appeared to be disturbed at the house. And someone had tried to set some type of flammable liquid in several different spots. Doug Benton is missing, but his killer knows that he's in a horse trial on a farm. And then bang, news hits that a body's been found. So if I'm the killer, I better run back over to his house. I better burn that house down now. And burn all the forensic evidence that's left behind. So that's why you see kerosene smell and candles, because Doug Benton's killer thought, I'm going to go over there pour kerosene all over the couch, over the carpet, I'm going to light some candles and I'm going to leave. And it's going to just catch on fire, but it never did. The candles burned out. So they start to look around the house and they look at the couch. And they, they kind of see the couch is kind of weird. They pull up the cushion on the couch. And there's a big, huge stain underneath there. They cut the cushion open. And there's more staining in there. They go under the couch. They pull the carpet back, and there's staining there. Blood. They do a quick test, a field test, and it's blood. Now they look at the couch, and they kind of see what looks to be, it could be, a bullet wound through the couch. The staining yields more clues. The shower curtain had been completely ripped off of all the ringers. And there was like a, some portions of the shower curtain still hanging. And it was very similar in color to one of the shower curtains that was wrapped around Doug. They see scuff marks on the ground leading to the door that leads to a deck. And next to the deck, they see a bush. The bush is kind of pushed down, like with tracks of a truck. Another crime scene person came, and we worked all day and thoroughly examined the house. One, one of the main things, we did find a 22 caliber rifle. The rifle is seized and taken for inspection. We go back to the medical examiner, and they're talking about Doug Benton's body, and what do they see on his body? They see one bullet wound the top of his head. Let's picture the evidence the medical examiner has and the evidence at the crime scene. It appears that Doug Benton was lying down on the couch, maybe sleeping, and somebody shot the guy from the top of the head. Okay, now let's look at what the medical examiner finds. He finds some stab wounds in Doug Benton's belly. There's also some stab wounds in his back. The back stab wounds are post-mortem. So they think those stab wounds happened when they took the forklift and punctured the horse truck to lift it up. They think they might have cut into them. But the stab wounds in his belly, those happened when he was alive. The sheriff's department canvasses the neighbors about any suspicious activity on June 4th. And the search draws out some intriguing responses. A neighbor reports that he hears what could have been a gunshot the day Doug disappeared. Which was on that Sunday afternoon after Doug had come back from riding his motorcycle. The person across the street gave a, a time frame that was consistent with the evidence that the shot was heard. In addition to knocking on doors, all of Doug's friends submit to a polygraph test. Police finds them willing to answer questions and anxious to help. The community is united to find Doug. They also share a lot of the same views. After a thorough round of questioning, investigators are struck by one thing. All of Doug's friends and neighbors share the same opinion. There is one single person that everyone is suspicious of in the gruesome murder of Doug Benton. 
What is it about Cindy Crawford? For decades, she's mesmerized us with her timeless beauty. And the press exclaims, she still has us enthralled. The secret to Cindy's surprisingly ageless skin is Meaningful Beauty Supreme, created by French anti-aging specialist Dr. Jean-Louis Sabat. Dr. Sabat has been hailed as an anti-aging guru and a skin magician. His youth-preserving formulas come from a genetically unique melon found only in the south of France with an astonishing youth-preserving enzyme known as the youth molecule that kept Cindy's skin looking so youthful. Just watch as an ordinary melon wrinkles, ages, and decays. While the remarkable melon containing the youth molecule on the right stays fresh and firm. I'm about to turn 50, and people absolutely can't believe it. They say there's no way. There is no way. Everything we do for Meaningful Beauty is like, how is this going to help a woman feel better about her skin, give her more confidence? And that's what today's about, just sharing all that. So I'm headed to the mall today, and we're doing a pop-up event for New Meaningful Beauty Supreme. And it should be a lot of fun. So what brought you here today? Well, I've been using Meaningful Beauty for almost two years, right? I just had these dark bags, and after four pregnancies, the pigmentation. Wow, you would never know by looking at it. Well, that is because of your products. Mm -hmm. We want to keep on the forefront, right. and I think Dr. Savat especially is excited about all the new technology we can put into the product. I started Meaningful Beauty so that I would have something to use at home. See how there's those little microbeads in there? Yeah. That is keeping the ingredients fresh, but over time, You'll see this whole improvement in the tightness of your skin. Your skin, it doesn't just look younger, it acts younger. It feels yeah. younger. You know what? It was so fun today just seeing, like, the variety of women, the ages, the skin types, the skin colors, and just meeting real customers getting results with Meaningful Beauty. I love that. Now, it's time to experience Meaningful Beauty Supreme for yourself. You'll start with Cindy's must-have skin softening cleanser. Then, our luminous anti-aging day cream with Dr. Sabal's Youth Molecule for daily protection from sun, pollution, and damaging blue light from smartphones. Next, Cindy's Advanced Lifting Eye Cream that visibly reduces puffiness, dark circles, and crow's feet. Then, let the rejuvenation begin with Dr. Sabal's Incredible Age Recovery Night Cream featuring the twin power of the youth molecule and retinol. And now, Dr. Sabah brings you the astonishing Youth Activating Melon Serum. This next generation serum taps the power of melon leaf plant stem cells. Encapsulated for freshness and released onto the skin to support a visible reduction in the appearance of wrinkles. The stem cells are the core of the power of the melon. It's like we are bringing you the quintessential vitality of the melon. All its anti-aging power and magic right to your skin. His clients often pay thousands of dollars for a series of treatments. That's why when purchased separately, Meaningful Beauty's regular price of $139 is already an incredible bargain. But Cindy decided to offer Meaningful Beauty directly to you through TV so she could make her secret affordable for everyone. You won't have to pay $139 for Meaningful Beauty, not $99 or even $79. Order now and you'll pay just $59.95 for all five concentrated super treatments. And now for 2024 and beyond, be among the first 500 orders now and we'll add Cindy's new super brightening duo, a $120 value free. You'll get 60 of Cindy's favorite Revive and Brighten eye masks. The celebrity secret that visibly smooths, awakens, and restores. And the exciting new vitamin C biphase brightening oil. Oh yes, you'll be amazed as it brightens an even skin tone and visibly increases firmness and elasticity. Imagine, you'll get all these age-defying super treatments. A $260 total value. Yours now for just $59.95. That's an incredible steal. But what if we could go even lower? That's right. Just use today's promo code SAVE10 and we'll knock another $10 off our already low price. That means you'll pay just $49.95 for everything you see here. We'll even add free shipping. That's why I'm so passionate about Meaningful Beauty is because I'm able to share with women everywhere. This special offer is not available in any store. Only $49.95 for everything you see here. Call the number below or go to MeaningfulBeauty.com right now. Coming up.
up next on True Crime Network. A concrete block hidden on some remote farmland is found to contain the corpse of a missing man, Doug Benton, who is found to have been shot and stabbed. Police return to the victim's home, now believed to be the crime scene, and find someone has attempted to burn it down. Police question Doug Benton's friends and neighbors, and they all appear to share the exact same suspicion. What keeps coming back to police is that Doug's relationship with his girlfriend Tracy Fortson is extremely volatile. Doug's next door neighbor hears Tracy and Doug fight often and fight loudly. Doug meets Tracy in 1997. At that time, she works at a tanning salon right beside Doug's gym. Tracy is twice divorced. Doug asks for Tracy's number, and they set up a date. But in the end, it's canceled, and neither one feels the push to try again to make it work. But two years later, Doug and Tracy run into each other again. She's made great strides in her career. She wanted to uh, go to the police academy, and she was sponsored, and when she got out, and she got a job at Nova Park Sheriff. Tracy is now the first female to become a deputy sheriff in the Oglethorpe County Sheriff's Department. Her confidence is soaring. Doug heads straight home and hunts for the number Tracy gave him two years earlier, finds it, and calls her right away. This time, the couple's interest is clear, and no one's going to let things fizzle. They start dating. Tracy and Doug appear to be a remarkably good fit. They lift weights and ride motorcycles together. You know, they like to do what everybody else does. Sit around, watch movies, go out to eat, and go to the gym. Now that's what they did. They went to the gym. But the picture is not perfect. According to neighbors, Tracy gets jealous when Doug pays attention to anyone else. Doug's friends and neighbors say Tracy is frequently waving some really big red flags early on in the relationship. The relationship was very passive-aggressive. Tracy was very domineering, very controlling. Doug, you do this. Doug, you do that. Doug, you're not going to do this. Doug, you're not going to do that. Things don't go well for Tracy at work at the sheriff's department. She alleges she's a victim of sexual harassment at work. The sexual innuendo around her that was being said, you know, the sexually themed jokes, the way she was treated as a woman. She also believed that she isn't being paid as well as men in her same position. She really was forced, she says, to quit her job and file kind of a suit against the department. So when she quit her job, she went to work for Doug Benton as kind of his secretary because Doug was a welder. And they just didn't work well together. I mean, they didn't get along, you know? They were together for a while, but they didn't get along, really. They argued a lot. At some point in time, there was an argument, and somehow Doug found out that she was deleting information about his company. She went into his work computer and just started deleting invoices so the guy wouldn't get paid. The work conflicts escalate into dangerous territory. There was one time where they were working together, and Tracy liked to threaten her own life around Doug. You know, pull out a gun and say, I'm going to kill myself. There are other incidents reported that Tracy pulling out a gun as means of intimidation. It's typical that men under report domestic abuse. They'll experience shame and embarrassment and struggle with the cultural ideals of masculinity. They think this kind of thing should be happening to a guy, and especially a Doug Benson who is a big, strong, tenacious man, a weightlifter. And Tracy is this tiny woman, just 140 pounds. Friends and neighbors report hearing Doug and Tracy have a serious argument on June 4th, the last day Doug is alive. And that day, Doug finally reaches his breaking point and has enough of Tracy's temper. That's my understanding that he had told her it was over he didn't want anything else to do with her. The murder of Doug Benton appears to be hate fuel. So if I'm an investigator and I'm looking at this case, I'm going to say, well, the person had to be close to Doug. It 
had to be personal because you don't stab someone in the stomach and then shoot them in the head unless it's a personal, aggressive, I'm going to get you back type of murder. And the killer knew his routine. Doug never slept in the bed. He always slept on the couch on his left side watching TV. Someone was able to come in his house. They were able to get very close to him without disturbing him. That's where the evidence indicated where the shot was fired from, where all the blood had drained into the couch from that wound. But police need to find the murder weapon. One of the main things, we did find a 22 caliber rifle, but it was examined by the crime lab. Ballistic forensic science is really an interesting science because bullets really leave their own fingerprint inside of a particular weapon. Doug is killed by a stinger bullet. Copper-plated, hollow-point, premium 22 long rifle rimfire used for high-velocity and precision hunting. Stinger ammunition is not a common ammunition, and it's not a match. That 22 had never fired stinger bullets, which leaves a very distinct pattern in the chamber of a weapon. Doug Benton was not killed with his own gun. But who else had a 22? Tracy Fortson. When police start to investigate Tracy to the serious suspect, there's a lot of information there for them to see. I think Tracy had two ex-husbands, and there were talks that where she had either hit or struck or threatened her ex-husbands at some point in time. Now we have an indication that she can be violent against lovers, which is very important in this. When she's tied to men by the bond of love, affection, and attachment, Tracy appeared to be capable or maybe even drawn toward intimate partner abuse. When investigators break out and they start going to all the hardware stores, the Walmarts, the Home Depots to look for maybe where this horse trough came from, bang, they find a feed store. And that feed store describes Tracy Fortson coming into the store and buying a horse trough and some cement. And we find Tracy Fortson on CCTV buying a shower curtain. Doug Benton's body was found wrapped in a shower curtain. It's not looking too good for Tracy Fortson at this point. After we searched Doug's house and her house, had the witnesses' statements that she had bought the water trough and the concrete, we felt like we had probable cause to arrest her for Doug's death. But here's an interesting thing, and it's kind of a game changer. Tracy does something that you just wouldn't expect her to do. She went to the sheriff's office and turned herself in. Tracy's adamant she is not guilty, and amazingly, despite all the incriminating evidence mounting, this case may not be what it appears to be on the surface. A better banking app is right at your fingertips. Download Dave, and you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less, right through your phone. There's no interest, no credit checks. And no late fees, because getting help shouldn't set you back. Switch to the banking app made for you, and you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. Download the Dave app now, or go to Dave.com today. Looking for a way to stretch the dollar? With Insurify, you can cut your car insurance bill in half. Scroll through dozens of prices and tap to switch online. That's it. No phone calls and no wasted time. Go to Insurify and save today. It's lunchtime, and Gary is double booked. Good thing Gary's company uses Otter's AI meeting assistant to take notes and generate a summary. So Gary doesn't miss a meeting and can regain his lunch break. Try now for free. Visit otter.ai or download the app. Hey, I just got a text from my sister. You remember Rick, her neighbor? Sure. He's a 76-year-old guy who still runs marathons, right? Sadly, not anymore. What? You mean... Mm-hmm. Just like that. Wow. So sudden. Um, we're not about to have the we need life insurance conversation again, are we? No, we're having the we're getting coverage so we don't have to worry about it conversation.
So you're calling about the nine ninety five a month plan from Colonial Pen? I am. We put it off long enough. We are getting that nine ninety five plan today. Is it time for you to call about the nine ninety five plan? I'm Jonathan from Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. Sometimes we just need a reminder not to take today for granted. It could be the death of someone you know or a health scare. That's why today could be a great day. Call for free information about Colonial Pen's 995 plan. If you're age 50 to 85, you can get guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance starting at just $9.95 a month. There are no health questions, so you can't be turned down for any health reason. This is permanent coverage. Just pay your premiums for lifelong security. 995 plan is Colonial Pen's number one most popular whole life plan. Options start at just $9.95 a month. That's less than $0.35 cents a day. Your rate can never go up. It's locked in for life. Don't put it off. Take the first easy step. Call today for free information. And you'll also get this free beneficiary plan. So call now. Call 1-800-685-1515 for your free information and free gift. That's 1-800-685-1515. There's no risk or obligation. That number again is 1-800-685-1515. 1-800-685-1515. Call now. Hello, Colonial Pen? They were gunned down. This is a stone bolt Now, determined detectives will have to trace the ballistics to track down their shooter. We are all hands on deck to target for murder. Next on True Crime Network. Tracy is reportedly violent in her relationship with her boyfriend, Doug Benton, and then from previous relationships. When Doug Benton's corpse is found encased by camouflage cement on a remote corner of a rural property, police believe Tracy to be suspect number one. There's just several things that point, uh, points her direction, uh, and then the deeper or more we investigated, the more it, uh, you know, it came real clear that she had something significant to do with his death. But Tracy Fortson turns herself in, confident that the story she has to tell can topple an investigation that seems weighed against her. They arrest Tracy Fortson almost immediately. She wanted a lawyer right away, and she never a- answered any questions that we had. But through her lawyer, Tracy has a lot to say. Tracy Fortson claims she can legitimately explain her purchases. I own horses, so I bought the horse trial for the horses. Well, Tracy, you bought the horse trial the same time frame that Doug Benton was murdered and found in a horse trial? Yes, I needed to do it. What about the cement? Well, I bought the cement because I was planning on putting in a new porch, and that's why I bought the cement. Well, you bought the cement right around the same time that Doug Benton was found in a horse trial that you bought, buried in cement? Yes. Are these simply coincidences? Is she a killer? or something even more sinister play. The cement block that encases Doug's corpse is spray painted in a particular way. And it was also camouflaged in a certain way of putting the leaves and doing the spray paint that was consistent with her mailbox. It was the exact design that was on her mailbox. There's no same cans of spray paint colors found in Tracy's garage. And what does she say? Well, I was using them to spray paint my mailbox. Tracy doesn't deny that it's the same paint in the same pattern because she says her own possessions are being used against her in a frame-up. Tracy Fortson claims that the cement, horse trough, and paint are stolen from her and used to frame her. I was framed. I was set up. So they used the cement that I bought and they used the horse trial that I bought to frame me. She says that because she was filing a sexual harassment suit against one of the sheriffs, one of her bosses, that they targeted her and they set her up for this murder. Doug had supposedly purchased a small cassette recorder for her to keep on her to try to catch the sheriff saying inappropriate things to her. And 
supposedly she had contacted a, a local attorney to pursue some type of avenue. I assume to sue the sheriff. Tracy, who does help, is planning a major case against police. A case that may cause embarrassment to the police and conceivably a huge payoff for Tracy. Is Doug Benson's murder a plot to haul Doug and Tracy for bringing a major lawsuit forward? In June of 2000, Tracy Horson faces a grand jury trial for the murder of Doug Benson. Witnesses came in and described their part. You know, the feed store person came in and said, that woman right there bought the horse trial, bought the cement from me. You know, and then they find the receipts. They match the receipts up against the time. Ballistics come in. They give a whole presentation on all the ballistic and the gun evidence, which is very significant. The 22 long rifle at Doug's house could not have fired that ammunition, but the gun at Tracy's could have fired the ammunition, but they could.